Welcome to the Lawless Podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Lawless Podcast. And today we're joined by our I President at Trevelyan College here at Durham, Kunle Adeyeye. And yes, yeah, sir, if you'd just like to start us off by telling us a little bit about your about yourself and a bit about your research and how what you're doing today. Okay, going. good. Uh, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to be here today. Um, I originally from Nigeria. Um, I did my first degree in Nigeria uh, before moving on to Cambridge to do my MPhil and my PhD, which I finished many years ago. My field of research is in nanotechnology and its application in spintronics, which means um, using nanotechnology to make tiny magnet called nanomagnets. Oh, nice. Yes. So nanomagnets are very useful. They form the base basics for a number of technology, including computer hard disk and some of the memory technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, I was like, to someone who doesn't really understand that, how would you sort of, how does that work? How do the magnets make them technologies? Ah, okay, good. So for people, every magnet is all around us. For people who know about magnet, you know that you can see that uh, a magnet you have north and south pole, yeah. and when you bring opposite pole together, they attract. If they are the same, they repel. The same approach when you have a magnet, you can store information in this magnet, and when you remove any external power supply, the information is still there. Wow. We, uh, we, we call this, they have inherent memory. So, yeah. and that's why it's used in memory technology. So, for example, in computer hard disk, when you record your information, the way you record information in terms of zero and one is by sending current pulse. Yeah. And that current generates some field. You have your magnet in the hard disk, and then you can record your information in form of zero and one. When you switch off your computer, the information is still there. And there is a way in which you can read the information because it's like a smoke. Yeah. When you bring a detector near it, it emanates, uh, the signal emanates, and you can read your zero and one back. Wow, yeah. so even when there's no current, the magnets are still able to sort of retain that information. The information, that's good. Cool. Do we know how that, how does that work? How does that happen? Okay. Yes, the, the, it's, it's fundamental material uh, information because of the, the nature of how atoms are arranged and so on. So when you take a piece of magnet, it's divided into tiny places called yeah. uh, each spin, the spin point in different direction. Yeah. So once you are able to align the spin, when you remove your magnetic field, the way we align the field is using magnetic field. So when you use my uh, the field, it's like a force that is pulling the field. When you remove your field, it doesn't ne necessarily go back to initial position. It has what you call remnant magnetization. And that way you can go back to read the information you have there. So it's a little bit scientific, yeah, but exactly. yeah, yeah. just it is in air, not all magnet, all, all material will do that. But there are some special type of wow. material called ferromagnet. They have what we call spontaneous magnetization. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, where, where are these sort of materials extracted from? So where, where do we find them? How do we get they are, them? They are readily available. Iron is a ferromagnetic material. Oh, right. Cobalt yeah. is a ferromagnetic material. Alloy of this is a ferromagnetic material. But you don't use them in their present form. You have to process them into yeah. what we call thin field, in, in thin film using nanotechnology approach. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what we do in the lab. It's like coating something with a piece of metal and that metal you can engineer it such a way that you cause them to behave the way you want them to behave not in their natural form yeah nice so um how, so obviously this has been your main sort of like area of focus for most of your sort of career um would you say what would you say your, your biggest contribution to this field or sort of the field of physics has been generally yes so there are a lot of uh, because as a physicist you look at fundamental phenomenon that yeah. It's not been discovered before. So some of these things has to do with when you scale down, when you reduce the size, the fundamental law that governs the way things work break down. Really? You yeah. will see where people talk of classical to quantum. Yeah. So when you make it so small, they behave like quantum type of phenomena. Yeah. And there are a number of those which, through with in collaboration with my group, with investigator or with pioneer, 
But recently, what we're actually doing, which is quite cool, is even though magnets are physical, yeah. you can get waves to pass through them. Yeah. And using waves, as we know that we're looking for low-power device, you can create devices which operate with minimum power. And wow. this is the direction of research which we are doing now. So yeah. that's sort of, you know, given the sort of climate crisis and sort of energy sort of being more scarce recently. That's true. It would make sense to have, as you said, devices that require less power, making them more energy efficient. And if this might, nanotechnology for nanomagnets, that could be a really fundamental sort of breakthrough for, for science, really. Absolutely. That's happened. Yeah. Wow. So what other stuff in your career have you sort of looked at or has nanomagnets been your sort of real focus? Well, like I mentioned before, there are two aspects of it. There is the nanotechnology part, which is the act of making things small. Yeah, yeah. That I'm known for because we've developed a range of technology that allow you to shrink something which is big into small. Just like when you look at your desktop, your yeah, computer yeah. now, they all have hard disk, but the yeah. sizes are small. So the fundamental limit we try to push is how small can we make things. But in terms of um, electronics and so on too, uh, one thing is to make something, you also need to develop how to be able to measure or characterize them. And one area which we've done also is how to characterize things at nanoscale, things you can't see with your yeah. naked eye using yeah. advanced physics. Yeah. Wow. So that's so, so insane how like just you can sort of bring stuff to that really small level. So what sort of technologies, so let's say we have like a normal size sort of magnet, like with a normal magnetic force, how do you shrink that down? What oh, do okay, do? so we, we use a range of techniques. One is called like lithography. Lithography, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in lithography, what you have is, you have a sensitive material, you coat it and you use a medium to be able to influence it. You can either use electron beam or light to be able to influence the uh, sensitive material called yeah. uh, resist. And those regions where you've influenced or you've probed with electrons, they become soluble. So you change the chemistry and then you can then begin to build building block. People actually, they've done some of this in, in, in time past, engraving on stones oh, and wow, so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so graphite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really interesting, sir. So yeah, so, so is that sort of, that's still an ongoing thing. So we're still sort of pursuing It's still that. ongoing yeah. because when you look at it, our transistors now, yeah. every... 18 months, we, we doubled the number of transistors and the complexity. Yeah, but yeah. a time is coming whereby the power dissipation is a challenge. Yeah, so definitely. a lot of um, uh, labs, they are looking at alternative technology. Yeah. So one technology, which I just mentioned now, using spin waves, which yeah. are waves in nanomagnet, yeah. is one of the technology that we are pushing. And I'm setting up a lab in Durham now to actually be able to do that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. So, uh, you know, we'll have to keep keep us updated with how that how that really goes. Yeah. So um, we've heard that you're a bit of a sportsman, a bit of a footballer. So uh, what, what position do you play and how did that all start and where, where have you played? Yeah, I've, I've, I've played, well, I'm, I used to be a striker. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. yeah, so and I used to score goals a lot. <laughs> Actually, when I was in Cambridge, I used to play in the in my college oh, really? team. Yeah. And I, I like to score goals. I'm quite fast when <laughs> yeah. it comes to, so I play outside uh, uh, left, oh, yeah, nice. yeah. So I I wear number jersey number eleven. Number That's 11. my lucky number. So yeah. if anyone wants to get a Kinley football shirt, number <laughs> yeah. eleven. That's yeah. what we need. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice one. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, did you take it beyond that? Any footballing now, or sort of has that been put to bed? Or well, I play uh, just non-serious football yeah, yeah, fun, with yeah. my friends or, or at times uh, my my children, nice. but nothing too serious because. Um, I can I'm not as fast as I used to yeah. be. And because I like competitive football, I, I can't be just an average. Yeah. So yeah, but I like <laughs> got to watch. Score. Yeah, I got a score. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm. But I still play things like table tennis and a little bit of badminton. I can play um competitive table tennis because that right. doesn't of course require movement too much. Yeah. No, exactly. You're not darting about as much. That's it's just a little table, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So if anybody wants to join me at Trev's um, we have table tennis there. When you are playing, you can call on me. I will be happy well, to Exactly. Come. Knock yeah. on the door, sir. Table tennis is set up. Let's go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Nice one. So, um, yeah, more about Trev's, really. So, okay. when did you become the president of Trev's? Um, actually, I joined Trev on the 3rd of January 2020, uh, just before pandemic, oh, as wow. a principal. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, what was it like sort of leading Trev's through the pandemic? 
Uh, it was really a challenge, but also an opportunity for somebody who is new. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I didn't yeah. knew, know much of the background. So coming in, you have to work, uh, especially for people in the colleges, what we meant to do is to move out of our comfort zone. Yeah, no, so exactly. during the COVID pandemic, we all had to move through our comfort zone, get involved in things we didn't know, and just learn and move with it. And it's been an interesting experience which yeah. will help as we move forward out of pandemic for Trev, yeah. Exactly. So we've talked about where Trev's has been. So where, where do you see Trev's going in the next five years? What are your plans for Trev's? Oh, I'm very, very excited about this because um, given my background before 20 years in Singapore and some of the things I've done before in terms of building people up or encouraging people, we're taking things forward at Trev now. We have a tagline called Explore Without Limit. Yes. I want all students to be able to explore whatever they want to do without any limit. Don't put barrier on yourself. And the goal is, is not to compete among students, but compete among your, um, within yourself. Exactly, so yeah. my goal is, first of all, to provide an enabling, enriching environment where everyone can thrive and move out of their comfort zone. That means provide resources so that everyone is like a level playing field. And what we want to do is to be able to inspire and empower students to be the best they can be. And that is already starting. And um, the goal is just to remove every barrier and to anything that you are interested in, push it through that learning will take place and you can build your resiliency through the program. Yeah, exactly. Because at Trevs, we have an, for anyone sort of thinking of joining us or is already at Trevs, as you well know, we have an array of societies you can join. Any club you can think of, you can join a, a, a Trevs level if you want to do it more casually or at a university level. And the good thing is, if the society doesn't exist, then you can just set it up. So, for example, for, for us on the Lawless Podcast, we even want to encourage more people at Trevs to get involved in podcasting. So what we've done is we've set up the Trevelyan College Podcast Society. So for new people coming forward, if they want to learn about podcasts, then we can come along and sort of share our sort of expertise of it and help them with that. So yeah, That's there's a excellent, sort of yeah. massive opportunity for people to do different things there. So yeah, what would you say Trevs as a place is, what's our biggest strength? Oh, it's, uh, I would say that because it's a small college, it's a friendly environment. All, co all other colleges are friendly, but the nature, the design is such that you know your neighbor. And it's a down-to-earth college in the sense that uh, uh, we want every student to feel welcome, to feel respected. And this starts well from staff to student. And we want to make sure that uh, we give student is is an environment whereby you are given the opportunity you are treated like an adult knowing what to do and with that responsibility come i mean without freedom come with responsibility and our students have been very responsible in the sense that they don't abuse the trust we put in them so at trev we believe in everyone every student and uh, our, our main ethos is to give you the opportunity and platform to develop yourself to the limit you want to Exactly. What would, you, what would you say Trev's biggest weakness is, though? Well, in, in the past, we've focused, often at times, people, people are, we are known for, like, music alone. Yeah, yeah. But since I joined, we've been expanding into other things. And one of the areas we're expanding to is also now in arts. Yeah. To uh, help students to be able to express themselves in different forms. So, in the past, we've been labeled as um, music college. And because we don't control admission now, what happened to people who are not musically inclined? So what we are doing now is, as a college, to provide a variety of opportunity for students so that anything you want to do, and like you mentioned, Alex, if that thing is not existing, we are quite open to empower you to set new things up. Yeah, no, exactly. Mm. So you said that we don't control admission. So how does that work now, then? No, because when you apply, unless you, in the past when, College was set up. Uh, you actually go for interview in different colleges. So yeah, if you are yeah. interested, so Trev can decide to just uh, uh, admit only music student or yeah, people yeah. inclined. But as it is now, it's a mix. Students are allocated to the college, so to the colleges yeah. based on choice and preference. So at the end of the day, you might end up having just two or three students studying music in the yeah, college. Right, exactly. So therefore, there might be other students who are doing arts so in the past is different you can control the number and so on but now it's slightly different and therefore we need to cater for everyone 
Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Mm. So um, we were just looking at the statistics before this, and Trev's is unfortunately the, the third least applied to college. Why would you say that is, and how are we going to promote more people to come to Trev's oh, in the future? Yeah, thank you very much. If you talk to any Trev student, they've had a wonderful time in the college, but this is not being communicated. If you look at it, uh, we are getting better now in terms of how we communicate some of the activities using social media. Because for students who have not been in the college before, the only thing they check is they check online. Exactly. If we are not present there or we don't tell our story, then there's no way they will know what to benefit. But I've spoken to a lot of students who said, oh, even though initially they didn't pick Trev, but they were glad they were allocated to Trev because what they've learned and this range of opportunity, they wouldn't have it other way. So what we're trying to do now is to improve on our communication and for students to be able to tell their story uh, uh, so that at least people will know yeah, what exactly. to expect. So that area is improving. In fact, this is one of my priority lists of things that we're doing, yeah, to promote what students are doing and also to encourage all the common rooms to also promote their activities. Yeah, no, exactly. I think social media is such an important thing because, you know, that's how people see it. That's true. No matter what actually objectively happens, the only way people, as you said, from the outside can see it is that is that sort of social media platform. That's true. So no, that really makes sense. So you said that was one of your priorities. What, yeah. what other things would you say are your priorities for Trev? Yeah, I actually have um, five, um, I, I have six priorities moving forward. And the first one is to develop a broad-based student enrichment experience that is based on the theme of explore without limit. The second one is to develop a holistic student support system that is based on equipping students through a range of resilience program because we know that we're all going to be stressed. But I want to be able to our student to be equipped so that when stress do come or stress stressful events do come, they have the resiliency to continue. And also one of the things is to promote a college identity that is based on respect for all, inclusiveness and lifelong learning. Um, we are also developing strategies for integrative alumni engagement that will create internship opportunity, mentoring opportunity, network opportunity, and funding opportunity for our students, and also to enhance our communication so as to promote the college and its activities internally and externally. The last one is uh, to develop data analytics for future decision making, so that based on uh, feedback from students, yeah. We'll refine our program. So those are the six priorities that we're working on. Right. Yeah. So you mentioned there about sort of mental health resilience. Yeah. Um, at the university at the moment, I feel along with a lot of other students that the offering for mental health is very poor. So all that is offered to students right now is you can have up to four counselling sessions. And especially with NHS waiting this being so high, there really isn't much scope to get involved in that. And, and that's a, it's like a six month wait. So at Trev's, what more are we going to do to sort of help people who would require counselling on these specific services? Okay, so first of all, uh, the university as a whole, there's a major thing going on. They are investing a lot of money into hiring more people to be able to help out. But as a college, we have two prone approach. Okay. The first approach is proactive well-being. Uh, why we know that everyone will be stressed at some point. If you are equipped, the number we will be seeing will be reduced so that we will only be have to deal with serious cases. Yeah. So we want to equip students through a range of program, resilience program, mindfulness and so on, which is already happening. We're also trying to prioritize, for example, now, knowing fully well during exam period, people are more likely going to be stressed during exam period than when they are just having fun. Yeah. So during exam period, we put a number of resources in place so that in terms of the time you need to see somebody, any of us will step in to be able to help out in terms of from resource management. And exactly. um, using data analytics, we know those periods which are a, a period of maximum um, a, a, a time that we need to see people. So yeah, yeah. priority will be made during that those periods. Yeah. But definitely we, we agree with you is an important thing and I agree with you with the statistics you've mentioned, it's not enough. University is investing, but also as a college, it's yeah. also our priority and yeah. Nice one, exactly. Mm. So also with, with sort of colleges, it's been announced that the cost of college and the cost of Trev's and along with every other college is going up, which I assume is obviously due to inflation and the cost of college going up. But for, for students from say a sort of lower income background whose maintenance loan may not stretch to 
to pay for college? What would you say to them? Ah, okay. Um, I, I, I see um, in, in, at, at Trez, we want to make resource or a, a level play for things available. In fact, since I joined, we've created a number of funds to help students. So for example, now we have a, a fund where students don't even need to apply to. When you come in, based on your level of income is awarded to you to help you pay for various things like JCR, your GAN, your library fee, and, and so on. As we move forward, we are working with our alumni to try and raise funds so that students who are in need we will be able to assist with them. At, I believe also centrally at the university, there are a number of uh, wider students experience bursary that students can, that people can tap into. But I do agree with you, with inflation, with a lot of things rising now. In fact, even if you go to local supermarket, you see it, prices going up. No, exactly. uh, yeah. it, it's difficult to, to control, but as a college, we want to be able to provide cushion for students who need it. And so yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So another thing within college that I believe a lot of students wanted me to raise on this episode today is uh, with regard to washing facilities, so the laund laundrette, which at the moment in college is sort of been outsourced to that company called Circuit Laundry. Um, is there any scope for that to be brought in the house? Because I, I feel a lot of students feel it's, it's too expensive for one wash, like two pounds, like two pound, three pound, fifty, three pound yeah. fifty for a wash, which is you know quite a lot of money. So is there any scope for that to be taken in house to sort of reduce that cost? Um, while I can't promise anything right now, we'll look into this because I all these arrangements were made before I joined the college, yeah, and this right, is the yeah. first time this is being raised now. Okay. One can yeah. look at it and also to ensure that Trev is not paying more than other colleges. So the first yeah, question, yeah. I because it might be a, a a university arrangement. I don't think it is. No. So yeah. John's, I know for a fact, doesn't have this this laundry. So they, um, it may be because they're like an independent college. That's true, but. Yes, I, I think that happens. But, but definitely this is something I will raise yeah. and I will yeah, also discuss so. with our JCR to see how best to move things forward. Even though I can't promise now because I don't know the details, but yeah, yeah. definitely we will try and push. Yeah, Exactly. Mm -hmm. So looking more about, about Trev's history, mm -hmm. um, is from our research we found that there's not been a female president of Trev's since uh, 1995. Do you, what's your opinion of that? Do you think that's a good or bad thing? Or do you think, why do you think that is? You mean the principal of the college? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I can't, I can't, uh, if you look at, there's a book, actually, the history of the, uh, which was released when Trev was 40 years old. Okay, yeah. And when you look at the history, I don't think that was deliberate. No, yeah. So, for, for example, now, um, when they recruited, when I was recruited, the whole process is, um, at the end, it's only, depending on the people who apply okay, and who people made it to the final if it's by just appointment it's easy to engineer but because it's a recruitment process is yeah, yeah. is um a different but i think that um um it doesn't matter too much because as we live in an age now where there's equality and diversity and therefore at the end of the day as long as we feel that all gender or, or they are well represented in decision making and thought are put in place for things. So, but I won't really tell. Maybe the next one will be a, a female. Who knows? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. So we can never tell. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Um, so, how important is it to you to have sort of a diverse team? Diverse team. Yes, it's very very important because first of all, I believe that it's no one person knows it all. When you have diverse views. And when you are making decisions that affect people, you want diversity to be represented in decision making because I cannot be making decision for something I know nothing about. Exactly. So therefore, I strongly believe in diversity and inclusion and I, I try to promote this as much as possible to try and ensure that people who are going to be impacted, they have a say in what they do. So for example, in our college management team now, uh, uh, college officer, every view is well represented. So, and for me, the way it is is, uh, as a team, we are all free to express our mind, and once we reach a decision, we go by that decision, and so on. Yeah, nice one. Um, so I think a lot, a lot, a few other students wanted me to mention there was a Guardian article published about yeah. some stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. What would be your opinion on that, and what would you like to say to people about what happened there? 
Yeah, um, all I can say is uh, because of the nature of the thing, you people will notice that I never said anything. No, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. that I don't have anything to say, but I believe that people can read between the line. Okay. And for me, in times to come when people know me, they will know that yeah. all those things were fabricated. They are not true. No. But uh, it's difficult for me to defend the against invisible enemy. Yeah, so okay. to say, let me put it that way, because w when people quote an animal source, it's difficult. And uh, for me, I'm also banned by my contract. There are certain things I cannot reveal. Oh, right. But for okay. those students yeah. who have interacted with me before, people yeah. who know me yeah. and people who know my belief system, I, yeah. I try to treat people the way I want to be treated. Exactly. I am not really, in I'm not um, interested in power. I, I'm interested in serving, right. and yeah. for me, uh, I'm not perfect, but I'm, um, I try to respect everyone. And for yeah. somebody of my background, I grew up in Nigeria. I've yeah. I, I, I spent 10 years in Cambridge, 20 years in Singapore. Yeah. I've worked with various people. No, okay, this say, never yeah. happened before. Yeah. Uh, in any team, there's bound to be misunderstanding, but yeah, how yeah. things are treated, it all depends, but I've never offered opinion, and I don't want to offer an opinion because anything I say may be miscon misconstrued. Okay. Okay, yeah. yeah, so that's it. But all I can say is I, I want to thank all the students, um, uh, those who have reached out to me one way or the other, and those who have interacted with that Trev is in good hand, and yeah. it's not about me, it's about doing the right thing. No, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, thank you for that, sir. Cheers. Mm. And this is the end of part one. Join us in a few days for part two.